Reptilians, welcome, welcome back to my channel. So this week we are doing a video that I've actually wanted to do for quite a while. This is something that we had to look up when we got our very first ball python, Sylvanus, because as you guys may know, she was super, super hissy and bitey and just mean when we got her. So we didn't know what we were looking for and how to help her help us in handling her down. So I just wanted to make a video all about ball python body language and what different things that they are doing means. A question that I get a lot is, is my ball python happy? How do I know if they're happy? So we are going to cover the different behaviors that ball pythons exhibit when they are calm and happy, as opposed to when they are very striky, when they're defensive, when they may be hungry. And we're also going to cover some signs that they give you if they may be sick. As I always like to say, all snakes, all reptiles have their own little personalities. Just because this is something that most ball pythons do doesn't mean that yours will necessarily exhibit any of these behaviors exactly like the other ones do, if that makes sense. And also I just wanted to throw in my disclaimer, I am 1000% not an expert. I just have a bunch of animals and make videos. So just also please keep that in mind. This video is sponsored by the you dude so make sure to stay until the end of this video to find out how you can save 10% off of your entire order at the dude.com let's get into it So starting with the calm, happy, everything is okay behaviors. The first thing is that they are going to just kind of appear calm. They are going to move around slowly. They may be exploring their environment. That tongue flicker will be pretty slow and it may even come out and stay out for a second before it goes back in. You will also notice that their muscles aren't all tensed up. So they may be laying in that enclosure and they may be kind of in a spirally figuration. They may be draped over something, but those muscles are pretty relaxed. Another sign is that they are relaxed. They may have their head rested on their own body. They may have it rested on the ground or a branch or on the hide or whatever, but they just kind of look relaxed. <laughs> this also goes into sleeping snakes. It can be pretty difficult to tell if a ball python is sleeping because they don't close their eyes. Their eyes are always open, but a couple of things that you can look for when you are trying to figure out if your snake is sleeping is again, they are relaxed relaxed. They are not moving at all. That tongue flicker is non-existent because they're not moving. If they are curled up amongst themselves, they may have their head rested again on that body or on the floor or on something else. Since these guys are nocturnal, a huge indicator is going to be if it is daytime. If it is daytime and they are not moving and they are in a hide, then they're probably asleep. They also slow their breathing way down when they sleep. Like sometimes I will peek in at Sterling here or Sylvanas to try to see what they're doing and I stare into that hide and they're breathing so slowly that I have to sit there for a second to make sure that they're still breathing. So if you notice that your snake is doing all of those things or some of those things, just know that if they are sleeping, then don't just reach it and grab them because it is going to scare them. Another awesome thing that these guys will do that I did not know until we got Sterling here is called periscoping. Periscoping is in no way a defensive behavior. It is not them trying to strike at you or anything, even though it kind of is like a cobra thing that they'll do. Periscoping is literally when they will just kind of sit up like this and they just look around. They may flick their tongue, they may not, and they're just kind of taking in their environment. Sterling does it always. If I take him out of his enclosure, the first thing he does is periscopes. If I pick him up and set him down somewhere new, he is periscoping. At nighttime, when he comes out of his hide to start exploring, the first thing he does is periscopes for about 15 to 20 straight minutes. So some snakes are going to do this a lot, some aren't, but it's just another behavior that is kind of interesting to look at. Okay, so now that we've gotten through the relaxed and calm body language that a ball python may show, let's get to some of the other things that you need to look out for, especially if you're about to hold your snake. The first thing we're gonna look at is just a couple of things that demonstrate that they might be scared. So them being scared a lot of times is going to come before they get defensive. They are going to show some warning signs before they're gonna start doing anything else. And as their name suggests, one of the huge things that ball python 
pythons do when they're scared is they coil up in a ball. This is one of the things that make ball pythons such good pets for beginners and people that are just getting into the hobby because in general, ball pythons would rather cover their head or curl up in a ball than to actually bite you. But them curling up in a ball most of the time is going to be something that babies are going to do often. As adults, we're not gonna do this as much. Another thing with ball pythons is that a lot of them are head shy. And what that means is basically that a lot of ball pythons don't like to have their heads touched. And if you touch their head on purpose or by accident, a lot of them will immediately pull their heads back to just kind of get it out of that situation. Sometimes if you go in to get a ball python out, they may run the other way. Now, this is something that ball pythons don't do as much. Babies do a little bit. But if you reach into a baby ball python's tank and they turn around and dart the other way, then they don't really want to be touched or handled and they may even be scared and they are just trying to escape the situation. Hissing. So hissing is also something that they do when they're scared just to kind of warn you to back off. So just as you would imagine with a ball python or any snake, them hissing at you is definitely not an invitation to pick them up. So how do you know if that ball python is going to strike at you? So we covered them being scared and any of those signs could lead to them striking at you. So let's see what happens immediately before they strike at you. The first thing that you will notice is that it almost seems like that snake is locked on to you. So they are suddenly tense. That relaxed body muscle is suddenly super rigid. They may do what is called an S coil where their neck will coil like an S and they'll kind of sit up a little bit. Some do that, some don't. Some do it even if they're not gonna strike. So keep that in mind. A lot of times too, especially if it is food that they are about to strike at, they will also start flicking their tongue faster. And that is just because they are sizing up that prey. They know that they are about to eat it. So they are taking in all that information about that prey item. So you'll see that tongue start to go rapid. A lot of time they will pull in a breath and either hold it or let it out in a hiss if it is you that they are about to bite especially. And if they are moving with whatever prey item or your hand that they are about to strike, they'll usually be pretty jerky movements. So a calm ball python will slowly slither and move where a ball python that is about to strike is going to be jerking because it's going to be focused on what it is about to get. Sometimes if you are the target of the ball python, they will do something that I like to call warning strikes. I don't know what they're called, but it's basically when they aren't biting and locking in. They almost like hit, they're kind of pushing your hand away or they will use the teeth and just not hold on. They'll just pop them in and out and that means leave me alone. That is usually a ball python's last resort to get whatever it is trying to get away from it, away from it. It's last resort is usually to bite. So sometimes even if your ball python is behaving this way, it needs to be taken out of the tank. So maybe you're trying to clean the tank. Maybe you're trying to just get it out to handle it down. And if that is the case, the best way that we have found to do that is two ways. So the first way is a snake hook. Snake hooks are super nice for just being able to go in and pull them out so that they know that you're there and just pull them out of the tank. But snake hooks can be a little finicky, especially as the snake gets bigger or if the snake is too small. So our favorite way was always to cover their head as you're taking them out. And the way that you're gonna do this is to take something like a paper towel, something that's not gonna hurt them and just put it over their head. So it's gonna go on their neck and cover up their face. And then you can reach in and pull them out and they are no longer in that defensive position. They are much more receptive then of being taken out. For the most part, ball pythons, even if they are aggressive, usually once you get them out of their tanks, they are no longer aggressive. So if you need that, that is a very helpful, very easy trick. All right, so now let's move on to ailments, body language that is telling you that something may be wrong. The first one is less of being wrong and more of something is happening, and that is them being about to shed. So their bodies will do a few things when they are going into shed. The first thing that I always notice is that their bellies will turn pink. Another thing is their patterns will start to look dull. And since Sterling is such a light color, it is really hard to tell when he's dulling out, whereas on my 
my pastel ball python and you can tell that that's not what she normally looks like so it makes it easy that along with cloudy eyes so their eyes will turn blue when they are about to shed and during this time they may stay in their hides more especially if you have any kind of humid hide for them then that's where they're gonna hang out for a majority of the time and especially if you have a super active ball python and you notice that they're hiding a lot then that's kind of an indicator that that may be happening so with all those signs just make sure that you know that during this your ball python may get a little grumpy shedding is a very stressful process for reptiles so it's kind of understandable that they don't really want to be messed with during that time keep that in mind as well and the last one on this list is illness so body language is one of the biggest things that you're gonna look for if your snake is getting sick because they can't tell you if they're sick so one of the biggest things is kind of what makes ball pythons so difficult and that is them not eating ball pythons are notorious for going on hunger strikes I just wanted to list this one first to say that if your ball python is not eating then you should look for things in addition to just that before you get worried so one of the biggest things would be them not eating and also them losing weight but a couple of other things would be things like heavy breathing so if they are sitting in their tank doing nothing but they are gasping for air or they are breathing very rapidly then that could be a sign of a respiratory infection other signs of respiratory infection could be any kind of mucus coming from any of these orifices if you see them blowing bubbles out of their nose or if they are just sitting around with their mouths open any kind of behavior that's not normal for your ball python could be an indicator that something is wrong and that's one of the big reasons that it is important to pay attention to the body language of your ball python there are multiple morphs of ball pythons that are known to have certain ailments they are known to exhibit certain behaviors and those are things that you should be aware of too especially if you are about to get a ball python so the most common the most well-known of these is the spider ball python and with the spider ball python some of them will have what is called a wobble which means that when they are going up they may do this instead of being able to just go in a straight line they may flip upside down they may have trouble eating they may miss food when they strike at it all of those things are things that come with some different morphs and I will leave a link down below of a list of different morphs and neurological disorders that they may have but it's just important to be aware of those things but that is about it for ball python body language there are obviously probably a whole bunch more but those are the ones that I often see with my ball python so I thought I would put it in a video to hopefully help somebody out who may be wondering about what their snake is trying to communicate with them. As I said at the beginning of this video, this video is sponsored by the Dubia Dude. If you are needing feeder roaches for any of your other reptiles, the Dubia Dude is an awesome place to get those. The Dubia Dude's website is super easy to navigate. It's just a few clicks and you have roaches coming directly to your house. He also makes sure to feed his roaches all organic so you know that you are getting very healthy feeders for your reptiles. Dubia roaches are my favorite feeders, especially for Zaz, my bearded dragon, because they they are super, super healthy. They are healthier than crickets and they don't smell as bad as crickets. You guys know how much I hate crickets. And it's so nice not to have to deal with that smell and with them dying off like crazy. Make sure to use my code at thedoobiedude.com to save 10% off of your entire order. Thank you so much to the Doobia Dude for sponsoring this video. As always, if you are not already, please feel free to follow me on my other socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put out a new video, which is every Sunday. Huge thank yous and shout outs to Creole Lady K for following me on Instagram and going through and liking a whole bunch of stuff. Thank you so much. You are the bee's knees. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. <laughs> Sorry. Playing in their enclosure and be all. So they kind of in a spirally figuration. They make it's your head. Oh, there it is. There's your head. Just making sure. Let's see, where is his head? It's a little less choky. Thank you, sir. Make sure to use my code at, oh, head. Sorry. Make sure to say bye. Bye.
Nope. All right. Cool.